So I'm sitting in a coffee shop talking to somebody about relationships. And she wants to talk about a relationship, actually a non-relationship, with somebody in the company that she works for. And the relationship has now got to a stage where to say it would be poisonous, you know, would be an upgrade on how it really looks. And she's thinking, you know, I don't know if I can stay in this company. I may have to leave and go someplace else. And so the question is, you know, what should I do? And my question is, well, let, my answer was, well, let's not talk about you leaving the company yet. Because what if you go to a company and the same thing happens again? So you're carrying an issue in yourself in terms of how you need to see people that you're in conflict with or disagreement with and how you don't let that conflict escalate into such a difference of opinion that you, you, you stop talking to each other and, and that's it and you decide to split, separate, whatever. So the Bible's clear on these things relationally. It says that we are choosing the way of love because that's the way that God chooses with us. He's a God of love and he talks to us about love all the time, about how much he loves us, regardless of who we are, regardless of how we're behaving, regardless of how we're living or acting or whatever. He chooses the way of love and he says this is the way of the kingdom. The way of the kingdom is a new commandment I give you, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength and love your neighbor as you love yourself. And then he even puts like a ceiling on love, if we ever get that high, which is the ultimate is that you love your enemies. So nobody's safe from being love. Um, so really, we have no choice but to love. So the issue is, how are we going to love? And how can we do that in a way that's authentic? And so looking at her, I said, so right now you need to choose you know, to practice love. And she says, well, I can't, just, I can't just drum it up out of nowhere. You know, I can't, I can't pretend that I love her. Um, I don't love her and that's it. I can't pretend about it. And I said, sweetie, no one's asking you to pretend, but you do need to practice. And we practice something until we get it right. So choose an area uh, in your relationship with her where you can practice being loving. And when you've got that piece down, choose another area. And when you've got that piece down, choose another area. And keep on moving forward a step at a time in love. Because we're practicing love. There's no pretense involved. We can love something small. Then we can love something else small. Then we can love something else small. And what happens is all these molecules, all these small acts of love, they all start to come together. And the action of continually finding something to love, even if it's just a small thing, the act of continually looking for things to love means that our heart begins to change. Our voice changes, our language changes, the way we look at people changes. And pretty soon, there's a whole different emotion in the room when that person uh, and you are together in the same, in the same shared space. So as you practice becoming love, uh, soul love grows, affection grows in your heart, and the situation changes. They may never change, but the important thing is that you've changed. And if you change, what if they can change too? So love is something we practice. There's no pretense about it. That's an amazing thought.